and welcome to another episode of the Studio 78 Podcast. I am your host, Nache from NacheSnow.com. That's N-A-C-H-E-S-N-O-W.com. Today's guest is Elise Smith from Winnie's Bakery. Can't wait to dig into her story. Um, before we get started, please remember to head over to NacheSnow.com to sign up for the newsletter and go over to the Life Plans journal page to find out when that journal is going to be released. And essentially, the journal, because people are asking me if it's more of a planner, but it's not a planner, even though I've been getting a lot of requests for that, so I may have to create one. But instead, it uh, is a journal where it asks you questions in 10 areas of your life. So you answer these questions to help you figure out kind of like your path forward for the next year. And so I'm really excited. I'm waiting for some paper samples from the book publisher. And I'm hoping that everything will be printed by next month fingers crossed, but be sure to head on over there. Um, also I'll be talking about it, um, on Instagram and Facebook. So, you know, anywhere at Nishay Snow, but I'm really, really excited about it. So be sure to kind of follow me in all the places. Okay. So I'm just going to jump right in today. So I told you we have Elise Smith, and if you follow me on Instagram at Nishay Snow, you'll see that actually after our interview, we went out to the Vigilante coffee that she mentions in this episode. It is so good. I had like a smoothie bowl. It was like a smoothie on the bottom, then another layer of granola, and then um, honey dipped um, fruit on top of it. Man, it was good. And then the bakery had some delicious pastries too. Oh my God. It was so good. But uh, anyway, but we had like so much fun just meeting in person and chatting it up. But I really love her story and I can't wait for you guys to hear it because it just shows you like if you listen to the universe, right? Like if you're doing something and people are like, ooh, I want to pay for it or you're really good at this and you decide to move forward and push it into a business, man, you just never know where that can take you. And another thing Elise is really good at is collaboration. And that's what I really want you guys to get out of this episode. Because even with me meeting her up at Vigilante, we went back and forth for a couple of weeks over Instagram, just DMing where we were trying to figure out like when to get together. But it was really her driving it like, hey, we need to get together. And I'm like, ah, even when we met in person, I was like, I need to get better at that. It's just making sure that I'm like, like reaching out to people and connecting to folks instead of like just staying in my little room making stuff. <laughs> but I think she just has like a true knack for it and that has helped catapult her business. But anyway, let's just get right into it. Let's go. Hello everyone. I want to welcome Elise from Winnie's Bakery. Welcome Elise. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> Yeah, before we go into the story of uh, this amazing bakery, can you just tell Aww. the listeners a little bit about you before the bakery? Ooh, before the bakery, okay. Um, well, my, <laughs> my family kind of has, uh, what, by my family, I mean my mother started this and my family has fallen suit uh, into place with the saying that uh I was uh, bo born different, and uh, I strive to be difficult. <laughs> I am a very, a very unique person in the sense that uh, I guess I always go left uh, with all of my decisions. If it's if it's a right, if I have two right options, via it be on the right side or the left, I'm going to go left. Uh, my mom says I have kept her busy my entire <laughs> life, and I'm almost thirty now. I have two brothers. I have Corey and David. Corey is the eldest of all three of us. My parents are Ronald, and people call her Vanessa, but her name is Vanessa. I've been fortunate enough that my parents are happily still together. Born and raised in Columbia, Maryland, right outside of Baltimore. Honestly, before the bakery was just a kitchen, it's, it's always been a staple in my life. Um, mm. My mom's mom, so my maternal grandmother, uh, Winnie, had her own place called Jeannie's, and I used mm. to be by her side. I'm sure there was nothing she could do to get rid of me, quite honestly. I stuck to her like a post-it note, 
And uh, <laughs> I was just always really enamored with everything that she was doing, all of the cool people. And just, I mean, she was like in her 60s just living the life. And I was convinced that being an old person was the most amazing things because she had <laughs> her art classes that she taught in her wedding and events and her bakery. Um, so yeah, but getting back to me, I guess, to kind of sum it up, I am a weirdo. I <laughs> love my family and cooking is a very big deal and always has been. Yeah. I mean, but even like thinking about your grandmother, like I think, <laughs> you know, people don't realize it, but the elders in our family do influence like what we become and what we do right oh yeah like if you have entrepreneurs in your family sometimes you tend to have that entrepreneurial spirit not saying it's that's all the time but it can Mm -hmm. influence like your future a little bit absolutely I agree entirely my mom had a diabetic supply business growing up I just saw the whole family coming together I mean literally outskirts family like um her paternal aunt my aunt Bessie would come over and help stuff envelopes And, uh, I would keep the little log book for phone calls. It was just, it was a whole family effort. So I definitely agree. Mm. So, yeah, so I was looking, uh, on your about page on your website, being a total stalker and, (laughs) um, (laughs) and I saw that you started the bakery in 2012. So Mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about like how that all started? Like, you know, where the the idea of it came from and then just like the, the process to getting it up and running. Yeah. Okay. Um, so 2012, I was in college and I have, uh, various health issues, um, that have always kind of been a part of me and I was just having a really difficult term. I was getting through it, but it had just been really taxing. I kept finding to have, I guess, these things to kind of sideline me or sidetrack me and have to do something to get me back on track. Mm. Um, I was spending a lot more time with my family, just trying to figure out what I could do just to finish out strong. And this was after my grandmother had passed and I hadn't really been in the kitchen since. And I basically, when I was, I took a moment to be honest with myself, I was realizing that I was doing everything I could to getting back in the kitchen because I knew that would be the thing that would kind of calm my brain. Mm. and uh kind of give me a center but it's just a very emotional thing so Mm. I uh kind of had a chat with my mom and I was like all right I'm gonna do it but I said I'm gonna do it over the holidays I was Mm. like I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna push through and then like I'll tackle it later on yeah well that didn't work I had I had a psychology uh what's it called final and I just Mm. could not sleep I was studying 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 and then you know how you reach a point where you're like bordering on insanity basically Mm -hmm. uh not to be indelicate but quite honestly you you're just sleep deprived and Mm -hmm. you're cramming your brain full of all of this extra information and you're not eating properly and things it's just quite the perfect storm for things to go south Mm -hmm. I had the bright idea to make espresso brownies because I had all the ingredients in my house. I had unsweetened and bittersweet chocolate. I had eggs. I had sugar. I had butter. I had cocoa powder. I was just like, okay, you know what? And I always have flour. Uh, I was like, let's just do it. Let's do it. And then, um, of course, I had espresso because I love a good brunch. And uh, I was just like, all right, let's, yeah espresso naturally let's right. let's throw that in there because everyone else will be feeling the same pain I am and right. I can just share it with them so they can finish out the week strong with finals mm-hmm. so long story short I did not take my psychology final <laughs> I did later take it because I had a wonderful professor but yes I went there showed up with brownies I looked horrid <laughs> my professor knowing my medical history took the hint uh, and then I just left the brownies and I got all these lovely Facebook messages talking about who knew you could do this. Are these store bought? These are amazing. They can't be store bought. And oh, wow. <laughs> kind of blew me up and my brothers knocked me back down into my place, but it, it was the catalyst <laughs> to get back in the kitchen. Great. And what, I'm just curious that what, um, what were you studying in college? So okay. I went to two community colleges and then ended up at Gallaudet University. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I went to my local community college, Howard Community College, and then I went to CCBC at Catonsville, and mm-hmm. I was in the interpreting program. And then mm-hmm. this was all before I started to lose my own hearing personally. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is going back to that. I was born different and I strive to be difficult uh, motto of my mother's. I just wanted to take hold of being a part of the deaf community and learning about ASL, everything that mm-hmm. I could. Um, that's something that was planted in me young. Um, mm-hmm. I had a wonderful personal tutor at home. And her name was Kathleen McMillan, and she taught me ASL, and she was the first person to immerse me into the deaf culture and community. And so I came back full circle and was like, what? yeah, that's definitely what I want to do when I go to college. Um, mm. okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because Gal Uda is like, is that like one of the biggest schools in the, on the East Coast? Like, yeah, Yes, and then it's um, the only liberal arts deaf uh, university that exists. Mm. There's, you know... The Rochester Institute and a couple of other uh, schools out there, but Gallaudet is, you know how black people considered Howard the Mecca? Yeah. Well, deaf and hard of hearing individuals consider Gallaudet the Mecca. Okay. Okay. There are other wonderful institutions, but that is, you know, the top. So you make these brownies. Yes. Everybody loves them. You know, Mm -hmm. you finish your test. So how do brownies lead to a bakery? You know, because sometimes people are like just known for their treats and they'll bring them to holiday parties and things like that. But they don't necessarily open a bakery. (laughs) That's actually exactly what happened. People kept asking me for things. The long and short of it is I could not stop. I just Mm. once that seal was broken, I was back in the kitchen. Um, Like I said, the holidays came. I was baking up a storm for Christmas and Thanksgiving and things like that. And I just, I I couldn't stop. I had never, I'd never known the kitchen on my own. It had always been my grandmother and myself. Mm. And to have that new life, to then call back to all of those memories was insane. I had never felt like that before. And I didn't want to let that go. And my parents just saw I was so serious and I have, I mean, everyone will say this who's fortunate enough to have this, but I have the most supportive parents on this earth, but they're also realists and they're like, it's not a cheap hobby. Mm-hmm. What are you going to, what are you going to do? Right. Like, how are you going to sustain <laughs> and I was this? Just like, right? You know what? You guys are right. My dad has a couple of key sayings also. Uh, one is hard work pays off. And the other one is, you know, like show me a pattern and, you know, basically he just wants to see that you're serious about things. And I guess I showed that I was serious. I was you know, developing these recipes, writing them down. I have about seven recipe books and they're not all good, but I would say (laughs) like a good, I'd say somewhere between half and three fourths of them are are really good recipes that I've been able to come up with. And so I was just like, you know what? They're right. And then after I made that decision, but I hadn't necessarily gone public or proceeded to do it uh, in a more formal fashion, I started to get people asking me, to actually like hire me for events, you know, just small stuff, birthday parties, bridal showers, but it just kept coming. It was Mm. coming a very consistent pattern of me having emails from people in my personal account being like, uh, I heard from so-and-so and and they said it was this and I would love that. Would you mind? And I was like, (laughs) uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to. I went to my sounding board, which is my family. And I was like, all right, guys, how do we get this off the ground? Let's, uh, Let's rally. (laughs) I want to open a business. Because what year was it when you first made those brownies? That was 2010. It was the end of 2010 because we were about to be on the holidays. So then we were going to 2011. Okay. So then it was, so I guess it took like a year or two for you to like really say like, oh my God, this is a thing. I need to make this into a business. Yes. It was a year of my parents giving me support, people coming up to me me trying to balance school and me, you know, managing my personal life because I knew once I I delve into the world of being your own boss or being an entrepreneur also while balancing college, I I knew that that would be quite a task to take on. Um, Mm -hmm. so we, I, I like to sit down with my parents and I mean, I make light of it because it is kind of funny, but they (laughs) truly are my sounding board. And we had to have some chats because they're (laughs) like, okay, well we need to talk to, a lawyer and be like, are you incorporated in LLC? I am a limited liability company, so I'm an LLC. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, all of those proper steps, getting licensing, you know, trademarking. I mean, all of the different things, all the different layers uh, that amalgamate the beginning of a business Mm. I had to take. And it's a process. (laughs) Yeah, I can only imagine, especially with food. Yes. You start to do kind of like almost events, you know, or catering. Um, So at what point did you say, um, like, this should be you know, a store. Cause are mm-hmm. you, cause you were at a physical location, correct? No, I'm actually oh, still you're just all in a, online. I'm, yeah. I'm just in a kitchen. I have a, okay. a kitchen space, but, um, being in a store is part of the plan. Uh, hmm. when did I start to kind of branch out is I guess another way we could take this question. And yes. I started meeting fellow creatives. Um, I got, I was really, really lucky. I I ran into a lot of really amazing people. We have some great creatives in my local area, which I consider like the DMV kind of Mm -hmm. area. I'm sure you consider it as well. And I just started working with them. I got my first, you know, styled shooter collaborative shoot. And it kind of just snowballed from there. I was able to really make connections. And then a child, not quite childhood, an adolescent friend of my brother's is an amazing photographer uh, by the name of Megan Elizabeth. And we started to connect and then we did my second or third shoot together and we really stayed in touch. And then I really loved her branding. And I was like, well, who did your brandy? And she's like, oh, this crazy. And she's also younger than us, this crazy talented girl named Christine and, um, of silver orchard creative. And so mm-hmm. then we linked up and then long story short, we have been working kind of in this little triangle, And, uh, it it really has been the most amazing experience. And by meeting Christine, I was able to meet, uh, all these other people. And then you meet people with event spaces, places where you can do photo shoots or do videos. And then it all kind of culminates beautifully. You see where the branding meets like the work, Mm -hmm. (laughs) the product, and it kind of comes together and it's, it's pretty awesome. Um, it's a long story. (laughs) No, it's a great story. And you know, for those out there, um, definitely go to Elise's Instagram account. So it's W I N N I E S bakery. Mm -hmm. But that is what kind of attracted me to your Instagram account was like, uh, the styled food photography. So I I was like, Oh my God, this is beautiful. And you know, we were joking a little bit before uh, we came on. I'm like, even though I don't know how to cook, for some reason, I still love food photography. Yes. <laughs> so it's like an obsession. I think like America is obsessed with food photography. No, I would agree. <laughs> I would absolutely agree. Um, it's very much a thing. There's a, I'm actually pulling it up right now. I said something on my Instagram that I think really does ring very true. And that is basically the work that is done with food photography is creating a narrative. You have to entice Mm -hmm. the eye, which then creates a narrative, which then makes you want to act upon it. By me styling this artichoke heart, I am enticing your eye with how beautifully it is lit. And with, I don't know, the capers or the fresh lemon confit that is surrounding it. So as to build its flavor profiles or the things that will complement this. And then I am creating that narrative of you're like, oh man, this would go so great with my mom's baked chicken. Or this reminds me of the time when I was in Greece and we had this, that, and the other. Mm. And then now you want to act upon it. It's like, damn, I need to go right. get some freaking artichoke hearts. <laughs> like, <laughs> that is exactly what happens when really great food styling is, is executed. Yeah, I'm a big believer in that. I I actually have some stuff to do when I when I get back today. <laughs> right. Well, you know, I wanted to because we have a lot of people out there. Like my listeners are either people who have side hustles, so they are mm-hmm. figuring out how to kind of brand their maybe passion projects, or you know, I do have a lot of people that um, are also just entrepreneurs. Uh, yes. But. I like what you were saying earlier about like really partnering and doing these collaborate shoots or styled shoots. Yes. Any tips for people out there? Cause I, th- I think sometimes people don't know like exactly what that means and then right. how to find people that they can then collaborate with. Okay. So the first thing I would do is kind of write down what you do know about style shoots and mm-hmm. then do your research. So first, 
be honest and be like, okay, this is what I know, or this is what I've seen, or this is what I've heard. And then do your research. And then like a subsection of do your research is find the people who either emulate the branding that you want to have yourself or that coincide or who look and complement what you already have. Mm. And then don't be afraid to reach out. You will not know if you don't take some sort of leap of faith. It is all just a gamble and, and you got to be okay to put yourself out there. Um, I'm an extrovert introvert. I am great in a new situation, but don't give me too many people. I live very much in my head, but I can't let that stop me from being like, oh, I really love her work. I really love what he's doing. Mm, I need to basically get over myself and write this email and throw my hat in the ring. Um, and also be open when those opportunities come to you. Review their work you know, see kind of, I mean, Instagram is a great tool. See the comments they're getting from people, see some of the other people that they've worked with. And if you're really liking the vibe, be open to it and say yes. And just be honest. This is a learning experience for us all. The goal of a styled shoot is to create an opportunity for the best representation of your work for whatever arena it may be, whether it be wedding or boudoir or uh, child photography, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Um, creating that platform for the best representation of everyone who's collectively working together and putting that forward. It is an Mm -hmm. equal um, amount of representation and work and effort put forward by everyone involved. Um, They are not paid for, but they can lead to paid work. Um, Mm -hmm. And at the very least, it is a way for companies, blogs, publications to receive all of this great free stuff, but also you can then write that into your marketing budget as something that you didn't have to necessarily expend this amount of money on. So you mm. may have wanted to do like, I'm trying to think of what would be, cause with food, it's a very specific culture type thing. It's very much so word of mouth and who, you know, like with photography, maybe you would have to do like a Google ad and you budgeted mm. for like an 18 month Google ad. And it's like, mm, but with that, I could have done whatever the cost may have been for like two to three styled shoots, which have this mass appeal. It's very easy for people to pass on things for Google, Mm. but when they're already committed to a publication, like they follow them on Instagram and then you come up on their feed and they're like, Whoa, right. (laughs) That is hooking people in without even realizing it. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, what are some good conversation starters for people, especially for the introverts out there? Because like Mm -hmm. you find, for example, maybe a couple of photographers on Instagram or Pinterest and you're like, oh, my God, I love their style. Mm -hmm. And so I think sometimes people get stuck because they're like, well, what do I say or how do I pitch them on this collaborative shoot without them thinking I just want something for free? Right. Well, first, come ready come ready, have (laughs) all of your fine points, ideas written down or somewhere that you can articulate it to them. Um, two, I think, especially for introverts, just remind yourself, they are people like you are. They are a regular person. I mean, they, I mean, they, they, they get up and brush their, well, hopefully brush their teeth (laughs) in the morning, just like I do, Mm -hmm. you know, they need sleep just like I do. They need to manage their body however we want to that to lead in this conversation, just like I do. They are mm-hmm. people just like myself. One, you just have to humanize it. You can't mm-hmm. hold them on this pedestal. However it is that that works for you. For me, I probably go hyper literal. <laughs> <laughs> I like to humanize the person and take them off of their pedestal. Yes, their work is amazing, but they're agonizing and being concerned over their work, just like you are. Mm -hmm. And then, so then there you go. So come ready and then do your research and then, you know, just be honest, be very honest. I wrote, uh, this wonderful recipe developer named Amanda Fredrickson. I Mm -hmm. was visiting, I was going out to visit California. I had some work opportunities out there and I just, I wanted to finally meet her in person. Oh, I guess I've skipped a step. Sorry. Let me take you back. Oh, yeah. I wrote her because I loved her food styling and the things that she was doing with video on Instagram. Mm. And I followed her. Um, 
and she didn't follow me, but she had written a lovely comment back to me after I commented on one of her uh, videos. And I just looked at her website because I was looking to do something, I guess, a little bit more comprehensive as terms of video on my mm. site. And I was trying to get ideas and I saw that her contact section had an email, not just like a, like a box or whatever. And I mm. just wrote her and she wrote me back the very next day. And she was just so sweet. And mm. I just laid it out for her. I was just like, I love your work. And I think that I could learn a lot from you. I am mm. a recipe developer and uh, I own a bakery. I told her a little bit about myself, my background, because for people who exist at a higher standard, perhaps in whatever arena that you're in, whether it be photography or whether it be food or whether it be calligraphy, sometimes you need to let them know you're just a person and yeah. nothing to be afraid of. Right. And uh, I also, I, I find if I, ta I uh, attach a photo or I have the photo in the body of the email, it mm. makes you real. It brings mm. you alive yeah. to that person. Um, and then she wrote back and we had this wonderful correspondence and in the email, the initial email, it's just like, I wonder if you would be open to a one-time FaceTime chat. I just have some things I would love to ask and kind of pick your brain. And, uh, from there on, I just kind of hoodwinked her into being my friend. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I just was just like, oh yeah, you're going to be my mentor. And she was just so receptive, so open. She's like, I want to see these recipes, send me photos, send me recipe concepts. Um, and I'll give you honest feedback and also I will be, you know, cheering you on your corner. And I just thought that, that was amazing. And mm. then I didn't want to push my luck, but I was like, I'm going to be out in LA. So just, just email her. She said to communicate and right. so I did. <laughs> and then we set a lunch date and it was the most amazing chat. I got to speak with her, uh, more about transitioning in the video, which I just most recently did. Uh, yeah. But I posted last Sunday. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> just humanize them. Just realize that they had a dream that they chased too. And um, no, yeah. I think that's great because like, you know, I always tell people too, because they're like, well, you know, how do you, you know, for this podcast or my other podcast, they're like, how do you get your guest? And I'm like, I don't care if somebody has 500 followers or 50,000 mm -hmm. followers. I send them mm -hmm. an email and they can either go. say yes or no. And if they say no, I'm not offended. So I've mm -hmm. had, you know, people who are in uh, different stages of their career, very successful yes. people to people who are just starting out. But, right. you know, my thing is, you're right. Like, they're all the same. We're all humans, right? Yep. Sometimes I think we do put uh, certain folks on a pedestal and it yeah. makes us think they're, like, unreachable. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> they have the same wants and needs as we do and the same stresses. Uh, if they care half as much as you think or as they betray on their Instagram, then yeah, they're, they're, they're up at night too. And they're telling themselves that they need to stop taking their work home. So what do you got to lose? Nothing. Exactly. And I see, you know, for your social media, Instagram seems to be like really your thing. So have you found that your styled photography has helped you gain followers? Yes. Styled photography and Staying, I mean, this sounds silly, but staying current with hashtags. I know a lot of people who have, mm -hmm. I mean, I have thousands of followers, but like have upward tens of thousands of followers, you know, a couple of, they'll do like two or three hashtags, but it yeah. matters. And so I'll make sure I'm staying current with that. Um, but also I've gotten very lucky and I, I exist in a very supportive work community. I did uh, an event a couple of years back. And I met the editor of Baltimore Bride. At the time, I didn't mm. know that when I was chatting with her, she just said she worked for Baltimore <laughs> Bride. And it was my very first wedding show. And I was having a great time. And I was prepared, but it wasn't quite at the level as everyone else. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just looking around. I had my little pamphlets and I had my iPad out. <laughs> and I knew once we went into the, the ballroom that it would be great because I have something they can eat. But mm. while we were just doing the little area where we kind of meet and greet, I was like, oh, wow. And she came by and she was so sweet. She's like, I just got a sneak peek of the display cake. It looks amazing. I was like, oh, thank you. And we just chatted. She's like, I would love to do a piece on you. Ooh. Well, another thing that I've learned in this arena is you kind of have to just take people a grain of salt, be grateful, be honest, be engaging. But 
don't put any real stock into things that aren't tangible, that aren't currently happening. Mm. If it comes to fruition, fantastic. Be prepared. But mm-hmm. if not, then you move on to the next thing because you're going to keep doing what you've been doing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, turns out she was incredibly serious and that she was the <laughs> editor, Janelle Diamond Ehrlichman. And, um, they had been trying to reach me, but I had just transition, transition, excuse me, over to a new email. And I didn't realize that it, it hadn't been turned on. And so uh. I didn't get any of their emails And so I get a call from this wonderful woman who I'm still friends with to this day named Jennifer. And I was just like, um, Jennifer Cooper, excuse me, Jen Cooper. And, uh, she's like, hi, I'm Jen Cooper. I'm a contractor. I write for Baltimore Bride. I've been trying to get a hold of you. Bear in mind, this is a weekend and I'm like coming out of the store and I was like, oh, oh, I'm so (laughs) sorry. And this was honestly, the event was on like a Wednesday or a Thursday and they called me on a Saturday. I was like, whoa. Mm. Um, <laughs> and I felt horrible because they had been trying to reach me. Um, and she's just like, yeah, we want to we kind of get started. And then it kind, I kind of just hit the ground running there. Um, so bringing it back so that I don't sound like I went on a complete tangent. No, 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 Having those, those photo shoots really gave me a boost. But then taking more time in my own craft because I knew – that the mm. things that I'm giving my clients and my customers were beautiful, but I needed to take time to expand into the media of photos in the realm of Instagram. It, mm. it, it gives you a lot of social currency, if you will. Yeah. And yeah. so I really just took it upon myself to learn as much as I could about food styling. I loved it. I love to make things look beautiful. That is a very big part of my job. And mm-hmm. so I was just like, yeah, we're, we're going to dive in. We're just wow. going to do it. Mm-hmm. And I kind of found my stride. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, just a couple of questions before we wrap up here. But it sounds like, but correct me if I'm wrong, like you have like a, a diverse um, income stream because you're like a pastry chef and you sell that online, right? Mm -hmm. You also develop recipes. Now, I'm not sure if you sell them or not, but you can let me know. Mm -hmm. And then you're, you do. Okay. And then you're also like a food stylist. So I'm assuming you might uh, get contracted to Mm -hmm. help, you know, with style shoots, of course, for magazines and so forth. And let me know if I'm missing anything else, but let me know how you manage all of that. (laughs) Uh, call my mother. (laughs) No, (laughs) I live very strongly by a calendar. Um, (laughs) my family has, again, with the sayings, my brothers and I have this saying, which is WWVD, which is what would Vanessa do? (laughs) And then again, this is a grown audience. So I feel comfortable to say this, pull some clutch shit. Um, (laughs) whenever I feel like I'm in over my head or like, this is a lot that I have to tackle. I just remind myself of that saying. Uh, My brothers Mm. and I came up with that when I was in college. It's a great, great saying. But the practical day to day is I live by a calendar. It Mm. is uh, just that's just how it is. And then using really great things. I mean, I'm not sure how practical you want to go on this this answer, but like I use Square and then I Mm. use Docracy for my contracts that I send out to my clients and I receive back Mm. and just things like that. How did I so much monetize these opportunities? Yeah. Um, it's really been the styled shoots where the catalyst. And then once you get published, people take, you know, notice of you once you get some sort of recognition and mm-hmm. then, um, just maintaining those contacts, just establishing friendships, like real friendships. I don't really waste time with things that are solely for work. Um, because it's exhausting in my opinion, I didn't go into corporate world for a very good reason. And so Mm. if I can't have some semblance of having a friendship with you, Mm. I don't necessarily want to continue to work. I can meet people who are strictly for work for that one time and have a really great moment, Mm. but Mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily mean you've become a part of my, my, my network, my, my friends who I have connections with. Um, They use a very horrible, but very popular term friender, which is like a friend vendor. (laughs) <laughs> don't even know why I mentioned it. But anyway, just keeping those connections and 
being real because they think of you and they say wonderful things about you and your work to people that they meet. And you can honestly do the same so that you will provide kind of this platform to speak about the people that you know and their work and you're giving each other opportunities. Um, I'm also a part of this uh, creative, I don't know how I didn't mention this until now, this creative entrepreneur collective called the Rising Tide Society. Oh, um, yeah. started mm-hmm. by, uh, a young lady by the name of Natalie. Oh, Frank, don't it? start. Yes. I was going to say, don't yeah, start Natalie me the line. Yeah. <laughs> I just call her Natalie. <laughs> Natalie's wonderful. Um, she's from this area from like near Annapolis. That has been great for me. I went to the Bethesda group because the Columbia group met during the day when I would be working and I met, so her name was, uh, Jamie Kutchman. She was our, or Kutchman when, excuse me, she's married. She was my group leader for the Bethesda Rising Tide Society meeting. It's called Tuesdays Together. I kind of just met these really great creatives while being there. And I kind of was able to establish connections with people who potentially wanted to work together. And from there, it's been amazing. They provided me with wonderful opportunities. I wrote a piece about the fact that I am balancing chronic health issues or serious health issues with running my business. Um, Mm -hmm. and I spoke about specifically, I have a condition called MG, which is Messenia gravis. And Mm. it came from a tumor I had in my chest called a thymoma. Mm. And I had to get that removed and things were different in the kitchen. Things take me longer to do. It's more difficult for me to have the stamina and endurance it takes to be in a kitchen, which people don't realize it does require. Mm. Um, Mm -hmm. but how my passion, um, and I'd like to think my tenacity has held firm and has supported me through that transition. And over the last two years, it's been amazing trying to just adapt as best I can. No, I I think that's great. I have um, someone else that'll be on this season too. And she talks about like how she has to like push through. And so Mm -hmm. what might be really easy for someone else might take her like twice as long. And it's kind of like, I guess, finding that energy and, you know, to like keep going, you know, any um, advice for people out there that might be in a similar situation and might, you know, sometimes people feel defeated or they're like, well, I'll never get to do what I really want to do. But any, Mm -hmm. I guess, inspirational words for, for folks. Absolutely. Well, first let me just recognize my privilege. I come from a well-off family, a very stable and supportive and loving family. That being said, um, everyone has the cards they've been dealt and mine have Mm -hmm. been quite a stack. I guess just find it in yourself to know that you're worth your dreams. Mm -hmm. You are worth every ounce of all the beautiful things that you think you want for yourself and know that it's going to require you to endure things that you had not imagined or that it may take you off plan or... It may be one of the hardest things you've ever done, but usually the things that are good or right for yourself will do that. They will challenge you. They will make you realize what is important and it will weed out the things that are non-necessary or not essential or the things that won't foster and grow you and make you closer to your dreams and fulfillment. And also find your tribe, find your people who lift you up when you can't do that for yourself. Cause God knows I have those days. Just remain determined, determined that really you can surpass or scale or overcome any obstacle that's thrown your way mm. and take it as a personal challenge to show the world how much of a badass you are. Cause trust me, yeah. you are a badass. That is a saying that I'm very firm in believing and I tell it to myself constantly Mm. Even in the moments, it doesn't feel true. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I think that is amazing advice. Thank um, you. And I'm going to get to the wrap up questions because I could like just talk to you forever. And so you're so like, sweet. Just, you're oh so sweet. <laughs> this has been one of the best chats I've had in a long time. It's like good stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. I, think I agree. I resonate with everything that you're saying, but yeah, I mean, the conversation is just so natural. I'm like, l- let me, let me get to the wrap up questions now, or I'll have <laughs> you here for like a whole hour plus talking. Like, uh, <laughs> people will be like, why is this podcast so long? So long. <laughs> 
<laughs> Special edition. <laughs> right? My guest just talks and talks and talks. <laughs> no, I'm just asking like a ton of questions. But um, so a few wrap up questions. One that I want to throw in there is you mentioned a few tools before and I'm like a tool junkie. It sounds like you are too. So mm-hmm. any kind of business or even life tools that you love and just can't live without? Google Calendar. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I love, I mean, I think you've mentioned Google a couple of times. Google mm-hmm. Calendar, because I can share it and I can send an invite to pop what I'm doing on the people in my life's calendar so that they don't feel blindsided that I'm unavailable for things. Probably just any type of secure, free type app that that's out there or um, mm. software that's out there, like Docracy has been mm. life changing. It's very similar to DocuSign. For anyone who may not be aware of what Docracy is, um, it is my online platform to uh, maintain and send contracts or agreements out to clients or other fellow creatives when we're going to be working together. I use it when I do styled shoots so that we have an understanding and agreement, a signed understanding and agreement. Um, and then I use it for like my wedding and event clients. I send over their contracts so that they can review. And it's just absolutely fantastic. Honestly, as far as like just utilizing the social currency, Instagram has been great. And Pinterest is great for me because people love food porn. They love to look at food and kitchen (laughs) porn is a thing too. And they love to look at beautiful kitchens. And I have been fortunate to work with really great people with beautiful kitchens, with great lighting. It's just been fantastic. Uh, So Pinterest, Instagram, Docracy, Google Calendar, or just Google, you know, the Google Plus, and then I use Google Calendar. So have you discovered your passion? And if so, what is it? And if not, what are you doing to discover it? I have many passions. I think I've discovered maybe my first handful. To get personal, one of my greatest passions that I've known without any type of ounce of doubt since I was about 15 is I want to be a mother. And Mm -hmm. I take that very seriously because family is such a big deal. My current family is one of my passions because that has birthed my next passion, which is my love of food and my appreciation, um, the continuing and unending understanding and learning that food provides me and just creating it for the people that I love. And I'm lucky enough to have clients and customers who would like to have the things that I create. Mm. And then my final passion as of right now that I'm working on and will continue to work on because I don't know why, but I'm pretty sure I'm going back to school (laughs) (laughs) is ASL and deaf studies. Ah, I am, I am, you know, over the last two years I've been losing my hearing and, um, I already had, uh, a passion for it and I was proficient Mm -hmm. in the language and, you know, there's just so many overlays with the things that I love and do in my everyday life that coincide with incorporating deaf community and culture. Mm -hmm. And so I was just like, yeah, we need to, we need to kind of delve into that again. Um, and I'm also fortunate enough that I'm able to travel because I think getting out of your bubble or your realm and experiencing how other people live is the perspective that you get granted when you do that is, there's nothing you can really compare it to Mm -hmm. anything that gives you higher perspective or understanding is to be cherished. And then if you're lucky enough that it's through travel, which is often very beautiful and rewarding, come on. Right. (laughs) Come on. Yeah. (laughs) No, I completely agree. I've made it like a point to travel a lot more Mm -hmm. this year than I have in years past. Oh, I love that. Even next year, you know, I'd love to get to a point where I'm like at least traveling somewhere once a month, you know, even right. just yeah. on the weekend and then maybe yes. have like two or three big trips because it's so important. Yeah. Right. It's entirely true. It is entirely yeah. true. I try to just go to like different places in the state that I haven't been, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm going to Western Harry County at some point to do apple picking with my family, my nieces who love that, you know, it's just creating new experiences and gaining perspective and travel is one of the best ways you can do that. And reading, love reading. (laughs) 
And what is one thing you can't live without? It could be anything, tech, makeup, furniture, like anything. Hmm. Well, I've already spoken about my family. And I think I've done Instagram a great deal of justice mentioning it. <laughs> so let's see. Um, probably I'm going to, I'm going to do a layered one, probably my purse because I always keep a journal and a book mm. in there. And yeah. I like things that take me away. I love the mm. escapism that books provide. And then I always have something that I want to remember later. So journals have been a big deal in my life. Hence mm. the recipes that I write down. I am the type of person who still writes recipes down. I mean, I, I type them in my iPad or my laptop, but I also very seriously, uh, try to write them down mm. and, uh, you know, have purse will travel. <laughs> I'll yeah. pack it away. However I can. And I'm good to go. I wish it was something more exciting, but no, that's practical. I, good. as I say, I'm very <laughs> practical in that way. And, um, I feel like I get to cheat. Like I get a, a, a Russian doll, if you will, it, it appears yeah. as one, but it is many. <laughs> right. Can you just let the listeners know, like where you are, like, where can they find you on social? Like, where can they buy your products? Yeah. All that good stuff. You can find us on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter. So for Facebook, it is slash forward slash Winnie's Bakery US, because apparently there's a Winnie's Bakery and Pub in the UK. Um, yeah. They're lovely. <laughs> and then on Twitter and Instagram, it is just at Winnie's, W-I-N-N-I-E-S, Bakery. And then lastly, on Pinterest, I do believe you just type in the name which is the same. Mm. There's no at or anything like that. And, um, yeah, come by. Don't, don't click when you're craving something though. That's not healthy. Don't do that. <laughs> That's right. Make, it leads to, hungry. <laughs> it leads to poor decisions and you just, you just be so hungry. And it's going to be like for something sweet too. So yes. Yes. Like... I was going to say, just don't do it. Like don't do that to yourself. Come by after you've had a, a really satisfying meal. Please do. We love, we love to follow back. <laughs> well perfect thank you i've really enjoyed this conversation thank you so much for like agreeing so to sweet. come on the podcast or the podcast <laughs> absolutely this has been my most i i can't imagine any other podcast interview going this well this is my first <laughs> i've ever done and it was the smoothest transition i thank you very much well guys i hope you guys enjoyed that episode to me this episode is all about collaboration and I think Elise is really, really good at that, like using collaboration to really put herself out there. And then, you know, with collaborations too, it's about part, it is about partnering with people. And so you're introducing your audiences to new people. So the people you're collaborating with will share your, maybe the pictures they took of you with their people, which helps give you exposure. And then when you share, like maybe the photo, that someone else took of you, you're giving them a shout out. So with that, that's how like collaboration works, right? It's like the sharing of audiences to give you like more exposure. And I feel like when you, when you really get that right fit, the magic really does happen. So be sure to head on over to nishaysnow.com slash 38. And in there, I kind of outline the tips that she gives for collaborating with people and then tips for people in particular that are introverts when it comes to just trying to like pitch someone and being comfortable with that. Um, and, you know, I just want to uh, read this quote that I wrote down of hers. And she said, the goal of a style shoot is to create an opportunity for the best representation of your work for whatever arena it may be. And so I completely agree if your style shoot is a collaboration or if you're paying for it, it's really important. So even for example, I've just paid to get some updated photographs 
uh, styled photographs of me next month because I haven't had a professional or a photo shoot in like a couple of years. And so I'm like, you know what? I really need some photos that represent me right now that I could use for nichesnow.com. And that is going to be the best representation of me, right? Like I want people to see my personality and I want the photos to be crisp, clean, and inviting, right? And so that styled shoot that I'm going to be participating in will really help provide it, provide that if done right. So I'm really excited about that. So I hope that this episode does two things. One, encourages you to reach out and collaborate with people more. And two, no matter if it's free or paid to get a styled shoot done. And remember that it has to be someone that matches your aesthetic and your brand. You just don't want to get anybody because maybe they're cheap or free or whatever. Like you need to make sure that that person is, their work is going to really reflect you and your personality. All right. Also, I have over at nichesnow.com slash 38, everything she mentioned from like the universities, Gallaudet and Rochester, to the coffee places, Vigilante and Pulp and Grind, to the places that she loves as far as collaborating with like Megan Elizabeth, Silver Orchard Creative, Amanda Fredrickson, like all the things I have over um, on the show notes page. So be sure to go over there and comment if you have any questions. All right. But yeah, that was it. I think she gave some great tips and I am even going to take her advice and try to collaborate some more myself. All right. Please find me at all the places. I'm at Nisha Snow on Instagram and Twitter. On Facebook, you can find me at Studio 78. All right. And on YouTube, just search Nishay Snow or you could go to nishaysnow.com slash YouTube and it'll take you right to my channel. And there, you know, just a little hint. That's usually where I first publish the episode. So if you want to get it a day before everybody else, head on over to YouTube and subscribe and you can listen on Sunday versus Monday. And also on YouTube, I post like all my crafty experiments and I plan to do more. I really want to get more into videos. So if there's anybody who's a videographer out there, I'd love to do a collaboration with you. Or the flip side of that, I love recording also. A uh, good friend told me that I should maybe do some studio tours. So if you're in the DMV, DC, Maryland, or Virginia, and you think you have a cool studio, maybe I could come over and record your studio and have you like walk the, my audience through like your studio and how you use things. So just that's just something I'm thinking about. So I'm really just thinking out loud here, but just trying to be in that collaborative spirit, you know, uh, I love to do that because YouTube is something that I'm really interested in growing and doing more cool stuff with. All right. So, you know, the drill, if you haven't already head on over to iTunes, nichesnow.com slash iTunes and rate me five stars, please. A comment is even better, but five stars I will take. It helps people find the episode and helps flag my stuff for Apple so I could get featured possibly one day. <laughs> and if your Android Stitcher allows you to rate shows too, so please rate me over there. I'd greatly appreciate it. In both platforms, please subscribe so you don't miss an episode. All right. And, you know, if you head on over to nichesnow.com, be sure there's always a newsletter subscription on every page, either on the top and bottom. Sign up for the newsletter so you can get kind of my thoughts weekly, along with me just reminding you that a new episode is out. And I will have more information on my journal coming out, and I don't want you to miss that. All right? Thank you for joining me again for another great episode. I look forward to talking to you guys next week with another amazing guest. All right. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.